Last time on Fairy Tale, Hundred Years Quest, Wendy managed to de defeat Haku of the Dragon Slayer Knights, undoing a spell that he'd done on Natsu, Lucy, and Happy. But the matchups have really gone underway. Laxus's fight with Kirin came to an abrupt halt as the labyrinth shifted. Grey, Urza, Gajil, and Carla have come into contact with Misaki. Lucy has encountered Kirie, and Natsu has come face to face with Suzaku. And as Natsu managed to just barely start to get one over on Suzaku, who should arrive? None other than Natsu's brother, Ignia, the Fire Dragon God. What'll happen next? Let's find out. It's chapter 101, The True Meaning. Got a cover page of Wendy pulling a Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. I don't know how I feel about Wendy with a side ponytail. I'm too used to the, you know, pigtails. An uplifting stroll in the sky for a pair of friends. Wendy and Carla, oh, it's so adorable. And we have Celine still gazing at her live feed of the event. She says, Ignia. Crow Dude says, the fire dragon god? That's Mercophobia's little buddy. Don't remember his name, though. Celine says, he is Igniel's son and the flame of destruction. Ooh, Flame of Destruction. Ooh, Sonic the Hedgehog reference right there. Could he be after the heart as well? The crow says, ah, blah, blah. Now two of the fire dragon gods are here? No, two of the five dragon gods are here. There we go. Selene begins to walk towards the labyrinth. Says, it would seem that time is advancing faster than expected. Wandering crow. The show is over. Leave this place at once. The crow says, but, but Elfin Sarasama is, Selene says, as long as he is within my pocket space, you've no need to worry. Oh, that's right, Selene managed to capture Elfin Sarah. That is, as long as I do not die. Huh, the crow says, w where are you going? Selene says, to the Great Labyrinth. Only a dragon god can stop a dragon god, after all. Hmm, <laughs> jeez, Ignea just... Standing there looking like a Chad, having melted through the previous impenetrable walls. Natsu and Suzaku, you know, just so you can see the steam permeating off of their body. God, Ignia has such an intense look. Natsu says, what are you doing here? Ignia says, the only thing I can do. There's something here that I gotta burn. Oof. Oh, so is he going after Elf and Sarah's heart? Hmm, interesting. Igni is very mysterious in his actions. It's always so hard to tell what his agenda is. Natsu's got this intense look on his face. Ignia, while walking off, says, Natsu, you still don't cut it. You're way too weak to fight me. So get stronger. Natsu says, hold on, are you running away? So Igni's son is too chicken to fight a human? <laughs> and Suzaku's like, cease, Natsu! Shut the fuck up, Natsu! Ignia looks back with a, huh? Natsu pushes Suzaku back, saying, You got no clue what you're after. Oh, I got no clue what you're after. But I also got a job to do, and that's kicking your ass. And since you showed up all of a sudden, you just saved me the hassle. Ooh, boy. I don't know, Natsu. I don't know if you're ready for that smoke. Ignia says, The truth is... You only harvest something when it's ripe. There's no way you can burn me the way you are now. Natsu goes in with a fiery punch saying, Try saying that after getting a taste of my flames. And of course, Ignia is just in the fire, looking bored. Says, I hardly, I hardly call those these flames. More like playing with fire. Suzaku says, How thoughtless. The use of fire magic against the Fire dragon, it's folly. Natsu says, I didn't know, all right? And if that's the case, then I won't beat him for the rest of my life. Should I learn water magic right now or something? Uh, fire type against fire type. Suzaku has a point. But, I mean, the old adage, fight fire with fire. Igneous then raises his hand saying, Flames are the power of noble destruction. <laughs> Fire everywhere. Oh, jeez. Is it like when Nappa in Dragon Ball would do that one attack where he'd just go, 
and just raise an entire city to the ground. God, the explosion goes bursting out of the labyrinth, and everybody's feeling the heat from Ignea's attack. You have Lucy and Kyrie. Lucy says, what? What's this heat? Kyrie says, it's burning my skin. Urza says, this is, Carla says, such a strange temperature. Gajiel turns to Grey and says, what are you waiting for? Cool us off. Grey says, is it Natsu? No, this feels like, and Masaki says, this has certainly taken an interesting turn, with Masaki being the only one who looks completely unfazed by what's going on. It makes me wonder, <laughs> how's Kieran dealing with this, since he's the most powerful out of the Dragon Slayer Knights. Got a massive hole in the labyrinth. Somehow, not despite being in the epicenter, Natsu and Suzaku are still in one piece. Barely worse for wear. And as they slowly try to get up, Suzaku says, The labyrinth has lost its shape. Natsu turns to where Ignea previously was and says, Where do you go, Ignea? That bastard. But before he, Natsu can go marching off, Suzaku grabs his hand, saying, Halt! You cannot win against such a foe! Natsu turns to him and says, Beating him is my job. Selene too. Suzaku says, You have not settled things with me. <laughs> Natsu's just like, Fine, let's just call it my win. Like, dude, come on. Suzaku says, I refuse. Why is that so? If anything, I had you overpowered. Natsu says, To be honest, we can settle things some other time. Right now, I can't just leave Ignea running around. He's a guy who really would destroy everything. Sokka got that look on his face. Natsu says, My friends are in trouble too. And at this rate, so are yours. Damn! Natsu got that serious look on his face. Suzaku got that look like he had just taken... The bitterest of pill. Natsu turns to leave and says, So let's fight af again after I beat him. Suzaku says, In that case, I've no other choice. Two men may accomplish what one man cannot against such an enemy. Let us join forces. And Natsu just simply replies, Nah, I'm good. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't wanna. Suzaku says, such a clueless fool. Surely this development would fire you up, would it not? Natsu says, I can do it all by myself. Suzaku then says, you misunderstand, Natsu. If one wishes to protect their friends, it should be done so by... Ah. It should be done so by any means necessary. Natsu says, you're right. So for now, this is a tag team. Our name is Fires. <laughs> What? <laughs> Suzaku says, Must my element not be included in the name, in the tag name? And of course, we cut over to Lucy and Kyrie, whose clothes are literally melting off their body. Because, yes, it's the fabric that's the first to go in the heat. That's how that works. Kyrie says, What was that heat just now? And it certainly is getting hot in here. So melt off all they clothes. Lucy says, Ugh, my clothes. Kyrie turns to Lucy and is like, That's some sexy getup you've got there. Lucy says, You're one duck. Kyrie smiles and says, Come to think of it, you and I go way back at this point. I mean, how long has it actually been in universe? Like a month? Two months? Lucy always makes the weirdest enemies. Kyrie says, Normally, I'm only interested in strong folk, like Urza, Loxus, Big Sis Masaki, and the rest. In other words, I don't give a crap about small fries like you. Lucy says, You should at least check if someone's a small fry first. I love the enthusiasm, Lucy, but you tend to be the small fry. Kyrie goes in with a slicing slash, saying, I may not care, but I don't hate playing around with small fries either. Lucy manages to dodge the attack. Kyrie sends out multiple slash attacks, and Lucy manages to dodge pretty much all of them. Nice. Lucy says, how's that? I'm seeing through all your attacks. Kyrie snaps her fingers, saying, see through them? Do you really? <laughs> and of course, <laughs> the entirety of Lucy's clothes have been cut to shreds. Oh my god. But she has her celestial dresses, so... But of course, Lucy's <laughs> a little bit despondent about being in the buff, screaming at Kyrie, What was that for, you perv? Pervert? Kyrie says, 
Aw, I was going for your body. And of course, you know, she brings out the star dress cancer with two awesome swords. And the look that very much makes you question, is she wearing underwear? It's cute, though. It's actually a very cute outfit. And she goes in, Ray, and saying, the only way to counter a slashing opponent is with slashing attacks. Kyrie says, you think you can cut me? You're out of your league. And so they go in with multiple strikes with e at each other. See, now this is the Lucy I like to see. It's just like, yes, Lucy, get stuck in. Go in on the battle. Kyrie says, like hell that'll work. Lucy says, really? Kyrie looks down in shock, and her clothes have been cut off. Mmm, ooh la la. L Lucy says, payback. Can you change clothes? <laughs> That's actually a good point. Is Kyrie now going to have to fight in the nude? And Kyrie obviously shakes and says, you little shit. Now this, this is what I want to see from Lucy. And Kyrie is actually a fairly decent opponent, too. Like, if Lucy can manage to come out on top in this fight, this actually might be the best fight Lucy has ever had. Like, I mean, she's had fight the okay fights before, but she always ends up needing someone else's help or getting completely overwhelmed in so many situations that the bigger victories she's ever had are so few and far in between. Even during the course of the Hundred Years Quest, it's just like, eh, yeah, she, she beat this dude over here and that person. But they're always forgettable opponents. Kyrie has been a very notable threat throughout the entirety of this. Like, Lucy taking down Kyrie? I'd give her props for that. I would personally give her props for that. But tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think that Lucy can finally pull out a win? I feel like Mashima is setting it up that way. And I'm actually digging Lucy actually going in for some close quarters combat. Although, I gotta say, the only downside about her star dresses is we've essentially just turned her into Urza Light. That was the only thing about her star dresses. They're still cool, though, but the benefit was always like, oh, she, okay, she gets the star dress so she can fight, but she can also have the Celestial Spirit by her side to back her up. That way you get tag teamed. Like, the moment you start removing Celestial Spirits from the equation, like, Lucy's role becomes a little bit questionable. And, uh, what do you think Kyrie is gonna do for clothes? Like, I don't think she can change her outfit the way Urza and Lucy can. Although, part of me wouldn't even be surprised if she just went with the flow of things. Also, this team-up of Suzaku and Natsu. Uh, how do you feel about that? Feels somewhat a little bit too quick, but at the same time, it, the moment Celine took over Suzaku's guild, it felt like, okay, at some point Suzaku's gonna team up with Natsu. Because he was not vibing with the whole takedown of his guild master. Also, Masaki being the only one who was just not even shook by Igneous power. What does that say about her? Like, she already managed to get one over on Urza. Like, how much more powerful is she? How much more powerful is Kirin if he's the most powerful out of the lot of them? It seems like the hierarchy goes Haku, Suzaku, Masaki, Kirin. So it makes me wonder, I really wanted Loxus to finish his fight with Kirin. I'm actually really mad that it hasn't happened. And I'm worried what's going to happen is Ignea is going to make his way to the heart and counter Kieran and just one-shot him. Or just take him down after a brief fight. And I'm like, no, I wanted to see Kieran fight Loxus. That was an awesome matchup. It was a cool fight. I love the clash of personalities. Like... I, I don't want to see the dude get taken out by Ignea of all things. N not dissing on Ignea, but it's just like, no. I was looking forward to that fight. <laughs> it's plain and simple. And Celine entering the scene. Could it be that we'll see Celine going up against Ignea? I've said it before and I've said it again. I also don't want anything to happen to Celine because she really has been an interesting adversary throughout all of this and uh, i would kind of love it if she just continued being the guild master of diablo like I, I know that probably won't happen but the position of a dragon 
being in charge of a dragon eaters guild is so wild to me that i would just love to know that they're just out there being little shits like it, celine being in charge of diablos just elevated their position in the story for me but again let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you like this video feel free to subscribe that way you don't miss out on the next chapter reaction or don't i ain't your daddy but i still love you like one until next time i have to do this then and i hope to see you in the next video until then buh bye, -bye.